Drex One, and this is another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good folks of Amoeba Music San Francisco, the folks that die and breathe for your custom Frisco-based clothing and your graffiti supplies. And today we got a new sponsor, BlankSlaps.com. You can go on BlankSlaps.com and use the promo code DREGS, D-R-E-G-S, for 10% off your first order. Behind the lens today, we got King Said. We got Rocky Vision. We got D.E.O. behind the boards. And shout out to the producer, Skino. And I'm really excited today because we have a real Frisco graffiti icon. Not just Frisco, worldwide at this point, but really got a lot of roots here in the city. Yeah. Real cool guy. And I'm happy to be here with the homie, Mike Giant. Thank you so much. Good it's my you, honor to be here, man. I, sure. I love what you do, and I feel like you're doing a real service to... The, the history. I appreciate you know? that. And yeah. I happen to be here this weekend for a show, and it just seemed like oh, I got to reach out. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that, man. The honor is mine. Yeah. And your show last night was a success. You had a, you had oh, a line yeah. down the block. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get a lot of love here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, always have, as you know, and it's cool to feel that love from uh, different uh, levels of society, different kinds of people, yeah. and different ages. And, yeah. Uh, that, that Frisco mix. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. Cool. Yeah, that's really diverse cool. following. Yeah. Um, before we get started, I got a pack for you, man. Some Thank slaps you. from our yeah. sponsor, Black I'll Slaps. Use these. Some markers as well. Slaps are such the jam to do, especially here in San Francisco. It's such a walking town. Yeah. And it's like you can just be getting up during the day. Oh, yeah. And it's so easy. Yeah. You know? And whenever you got time to kill, you just kick back and. Yeah, and we would. Uh, I was talking about that last night with some young graffiti dudes that we would hang out at uh, Casanova Bar and a few others down there and uh, just have drinks and stuff before we'd go writing, but we would be uh, writing on stickers yeah. before we'd head out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was always into the stickers, almost to a ridiculous level. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Really, but, you, you know, just because it's like, it's not proper graffiti, you know, I mean... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Is is not it's like not catching a tag with a yeah, marker yeah, in your, you know, it, yeah. it's different, but it still counts as far as I'm concerned. Like personally, I would always look at the stickers. Yeah. You know, that's a good way to get up and stay up. It depends. That's yeah. the thing. You can put stickers in spots where you might not be able to catch a tag. Exactly. You know, and they're a little less obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they look like a, a product. Yeah, that's true. Sticker or whatever. And, uh, yeah. And they made the sticker technology so good, too, with that, like, eggshell shit. Eggshells, so it's yeah. just, like, These ones right here are, 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 are pretty damn durable from Rad. Black Slash. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would think. I mean, it's 2023. All that kind of graffiti equipment stuff is, like, on point. Yeah. No it's doubt. so competitive. You well, know? well, speaking of that, let, let, let's go back in the time machine, man, before Fun. all that. I love going back all in the time the machine. All the way back, <laughs> back to the beginning. You, you told your story several times, but sure. it, it started in upstate New York, I believe. And, oh, yeah. And then yeah, to born and raised in upstate New York. Parents got sick of the crazy winters. Yeah. Terrible blizzard, I think, in 78. And they were like, man, we need to check out the desert. And at the time, country western stuff was kind of in popular culture. There was, like, different movies about cowboy shit and stuff and uh actually also uh playboy magazine was always around oddly my mother would pay for the subscription for the articles <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> they always had really good writing yeah so she would read it first and then it would just be out but i remember they had these ads in the back uh advertising albuquerque and rio rancho because the land was super cheap and there was right. a lot of opportunities so right, right, obviously right. a lot of people saw that including my parents yeah even if it was like they didn't even really trip on that directly. But uh, we drove out to actually check out Phoenix and got to Albuquerque, and they liked it. And we mm -hmm. decided to stay there for a few days, and then the next summer we moved out. Mm. So I was really, from eight years old on, eight until, let's see, I was 22, I was in Albuquerque. Yeah. Albuquerque is a, a, a cool town. It seems like you still got a lot of love out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's another place. Absolutely. If I do a show or poster sale or something, they'll line up deep. Yeah. And, uh, again, all different generations of people, people that know me from different scenes. Yeah. You know, and they all come together. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about when you were growing up, but I, I've been out there a few times on some music shit and some other things, and, and, and they have their own scene there that people don't really know about. 
with yeah. the graph and and, yeah. with, and with the in the raps and the music and all types of stuff. They have their, their own culture. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and, it, and then there's, you know, the stuff that's really touches on the local culture, too. Mm -hmm. It's like my Navajo friends that do hip-hop or, like, death metal and shit. Right. You know, they got their own different yeah. vibe of it. Even, yeah. like, the beat patterns might be more like a, right. a native, like that heartbeat, yeah. you yeah. know? Uh, yeah, I, I love... The, you know, this New Mexico is kind of a love-hate thing for me. What's, what's the hate part come from? <sighs> well... I mean, it started as soon as I got there because I was just like a really tall, blonde, white kid, for obviously not from there. And so the local, like, Cholo kids just tormented me <laughs> daily. Right. I had to learn how to fist fight, you know, right. I, first week I was there. Mm. And that was just harsh. That was, you know. Um, so I kind of grew up in fear yeah, <laughs> on some it. level. Yeah. Uh, but oddly... Once I started writing graffiti and doing regular kind of art felonies or whatever, uh, a lot of the guys that would torment me ended up taking me under their wing because mm. the, the, something about the graffiti writing equaled the playing fields. It's like, oh, ah, yeah. this is a goofy looking dude, but he, homie gets down. So yeah. bring him along. Yeah, graffiti is one of those things where if you if you if you put it down, you can gain respect from that. From oh, it's cool people. that way because yeah. it really has. It's so hip hop in that way to me. It's right. really just show and prove. Exactly. It doesn't matter. You know, and even there's, you know, like rich kids with all kinds of access to everything, you know, that's that doesn't help you in a in graffiti writing mm -hmm. or hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It can kind of hurt against you, but again, they're not gonna really hate on you that much. I feel like yeah. the Beastie Boys got that rap. Yeah, I mean a little bit it, that they had it all depends on how, how money how, and whatnot. How well you put down your style. But that's the, the thing. Day. Yeah. Right? Like no matter how much you want to hate on them them goofy dudes that came with something that was cool. Yeah. And it's it crazy. Stuck. I was I was listening to Paul's boutique on the way over here. That's yeah. Like, that's I, I I bought that on vinyl recently. Yeah, that's and the shit. it's uh it's it's unique. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the samples and the transitions. I recently yeah. heard Rick Rubin talking about that one, too. Yeah. I, was he involved in I that? I don't think he was. I don't think he I think was. They but I think they were talking one. about, like, the samples and, yeah. like, where it was coming from, and Rick appreciated that. Yeah. If yeah. I remember right, I hope I'm not. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, like, like your, your, your path to writing seems to be kind of linked to hip-hop in a way. And you started in the late 80s. So yeah. that, that was kind of the time where yeah. the, that world was was emerging in terms of like yeah. breakdancing, rap, That's DJ. That's the first graffiti. places I started seeing New York graffiti. Yeah, yeah, the breaking movies mm -hmm. and um, that book Subway Art. There yeah. was a kid in my uh, might have been fresh, freshman year math class. Uh, he was from New York City and he had Subway Art and he saw that I would draw during class. And I would draw lettering and stuff, like skateboard stuff. And he yeah. was like, yo, do you know about this graffiti writing stuff? And I was like, whoa, that's cool. But I was like, this is on subway trains. We ain't got no subway trains in Albuquerque. And I just kind of dismissed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't, ha I can't relate to this at all. Mm. And he was so hyped on it, you know. And we shared love for rap music. So he was, he was cool with me, even though... Again, I was just this big, gawky, goofy-looking kid, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, they get talking to me and be like, oh, shit. But you were always, you always were, you were drawing and... Constantly, yeah. as soon as I could hold a crayon. Was that, like, your parents' influence? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. Um, my parents, <clears throat> my mom especially likes to joke that I was a motor mouth as a kid. I would, like, do sound effects and have space battles and shit in the back of the car, and it drove them nuts. But if I had art supplies in front of me, I would shut up and concentrate. And so it was kind of the survival thing. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's like, Mom, I, I, I need more markers. And she'd be like, Mike, I bought you that box of 30 like a week ago. I know, I used them all. And she'd be like, all right, let's go get more. Yeah. Even in like Christmas stockings, when I was the first year of writing graffiti, I was living at home and they would put uh, cans in my stocking. Yeah, that is dope. yeah they, they were cool yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. They, they, the they, tattooing was a little harder for them to kind of understand and right. whatnot. But after doing that all over the world and making a name for myself, they don't trip on that either. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it was, it's really been a, a, life, <laughs> a lifelong thing for you. Yeah. What, what was the point that drove you from going on paper to taking it to the walls with spray paint? Uh, I was at a skate spot, and uh, these older dudes showed up. 
and they were skaters too, and they were better than us. And we just kind of kicked back and let them do their thing and show off and whatnot. But when they left, they grabbed a spray can out of the back of their little truck and they just caught some tags. And I was like, oh shit, I just saw somebody do that. Mm. And then it was like, oh, I know about this. Right. I've been following this. You know, I've been reading all the gangster shit too. And I was like, it's just casual like that? Huh. I had no idea. I thought you'd have to be, like, super sketched out, you know. Right, right, right. These guys were so casual about it. So next day I came back with, like, all the cans I could uh, steal from my dad from the garage, all his auto paint and shit. And I did a piece that said Uptown Skate Posse. And it was just our little skate crew, you know, skateboarder yeah. kids. Yeah. And I took my time, and I was <clears> like, <throat> man, this is fun, you know. And, and that was just that's how it really started, you know, it was just kind of seeing it. Because, again, putting lettering together and learning how to do the characters and things. I could study. I knew how to study and learn new yeah. things, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, it's like a way to challenge yourself, too. To, to, yeah, to, and I to had interest. But, again, it, it didn't make that connection until I saw somebody do it in front of me. Sure. You know, and yeah. then was like, oh, I can participate in this. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And right away was just doing it at night, you know, by myself, going huge and painting really ugly shit, making all the common mistakes, mm -hmm. whole piece dripping because I'm trying to paint on, like, wet metal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I had heart. I was, mm -hmm. I was into it. And then it just evolved from there, just meeting people and, you know, getting real mentors and whatnot. This episode of the History of the Bay podcast is brought to you by BlankSlaps.com. This website is the number one source for you to get eggshell stickers. They just sent me a pack. Look at this variety, man. You can do all types of stuff with these. These are the real deal eggshells, different colors, different sizes, custom stuff, real unique brands. Blankslaps.com has it all. They also have plenty of graffiti supplies, such as these markers. They got gear. They got apparel. These stickers are really dope for anyone who's looking to do some writing, some bombing, or even just some casual art, have something around the house, have some fun to work on and make a great gift. And if you use the promo code DREGS, D-R-E-G-S, that will give you 10% off each order. So make sure that you go check out blankslaps.com, tap in with the promo code DREGS, and get you some of these high-quality eggshell stickers as soon as you can. Check them out, give them the seal of approval, and we appreciate them supporting the History of the Bay podcast. And did I hear correctly that you had a battle early on with the local crew called PBT? Yeah, yeah. No, that was a... They were just neighborhood kids. I think they had older brothers that were maybe in real gangs. Uh-huh. Uh, and I just didn't vibe with them for whatever. I didn't vibe with a lot of people, to be honest, you know? <laughs> and... Yeah, these kids, uh, one of them pulled a gun on me. I was painting a wall in the neighborhood at my friend's house, and his parents were, like, cool with it. And I was doing a nice thing, and these kids rolled up, like, three deep and were like, yo, give us all your pain. And I was like, no. What are you talking about, dude? There's witnesses. There's people here. What are you thinking? You know, like, no. And I just kept painting. I didn't even, I didn't give him nothing. And then the kid pulled a gun and was like, yo, I'll shoot you, motherfucker. And I was like, no, can I cuss? I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 <laughs> But of anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, fucking do it. Really? You're going to shoot me right here in front of all these people over some spray cans? Like, bitch, go steal your own. What the fuck? You know, it's nothing. I, I don't know why I was cocky even. Yeah. I just wasn't. I was older, and I was way bigger than them. Yeah. You know? And I was like, nah, you ain't using that gun, fool. Fuck you. You know, and they just talk shit, and I just kept painting, and I think they kind of crept over near the the crate of paint, and I made a fist. They're like, "All right, you want to set this off? I'm ready. Let's go then." You know, and they were like, "Nah, fuck you, fool," all that shit. But yeah, yeah. So then, you know, the next stuff I did on the freeway, I was like, "Yo, fuck you, fools." You know, nice. suck it. You yeah. know, bring it. I'm on the freeway. What are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that would happen. <laughs> that's 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 definitely part of the game. I, fuck, the one time I got arrested in Albuquerque, uh, the cop took my paint into evidence, and then I saw on the arrest report that he only put one can down for evidence, and he had, like, 30 cans and, like, two crates or whatever. 
And so I called his uh, sergeant and was like, hey, am I entitled to get this property back? And he was like, yeah, actually, that's a real issue. Let me get back to you. And the, the guy that arrested me, and this was just like two days after the arrest, was like, hey, you need to come to the station right now and get that paint. I'm not waiting 15 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, cool. He was, he must have gotten so much trouble. Yeah. And he had to physically give me all this paint that I had stolen, you know, and put it back in my truck. And yeah. was like, I better not see this shit on the freeway. And I was like, tonight, I see your name on the freeway. And I literally wrote his name. Shout out to <laughs> Officer. I wish I could remember his name. <laughs> But yeah, that's yeah. That was kind of the thing with graffiti. It was yeah. such a public thing. You could yeah, be yeah. like specifically like fuck you. Know. Challenge people, yeah, and yeah. Stand up for yourself. And then not, you know, the consequences were were way different than they are now, too, right? Yeah, that's the thing. When I got arrested, uh, I think they had still by that time made graffiti vandalism in particular an automatic felony. Okay. But mine got dro dropped to a misdemeanor, misdemeanor in the, yeah. in court. And I ended up doing 75 hours community service, right. seven weekends. Right, no right. big deal, actually. Yeah. It was Actually, those are great stories. That, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know community service is like hang out with a bunch of other writers all day and go around looking I was at hanging out with people that did sketchy shit. Like, oh, were I you told... doing like side of the freeway community yeah, service? Yeah, we were, oh, we were okay. doing like picking up trash on the yeah, highways yeah, yeah. and like schoolyards and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all the dudes were in for, like, battery and drunk driving and stuff. Because they would ask me, what are you here for? And I'm like, oh, I write graffiti. And they're like, oh, damn, you're the graffiti dude? Like, I did all the graffiti. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm one of, like, maybe 200 people doing it, you know? And they were like, wow, they really busted you for that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm here with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would just kick it. Right. We had drivers that would let us drink 40s in the van. <laughs> right. Seriously. He'd be yeah. like, yeah, I can go in the gas station, get something to drink if you guys want to. Yeah. And one of the guys came back with a 40. And we were all like, wait a minute, what? We can drink 40s? And he was like, yeah, he just said. And, the, yeah, the foreman was like, yeah, I said whatever you can get in the gas station. Wow. We were like, hell yeah, we're going to go back in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's tight. If it rained, we would just sit in the van all day and just drink and talk. Yeah, that, that's not much of a deterrent <laughs> to, to stopping graffiti right there. <laughs> well, it depends. It's still a pain in the ass I'm, to have to do it. but Yeah. I have friends that got three strikes for graffiti and yeah, ended up going yeah. to prison here right, in California. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it's the thing. Especially no, here in California, it's I, I, bad I've, news. I've had to fight felonies over stupid shit, too. I was oh, on yeah. probation for three years. Ugh, yeah, that sucks. Over stupid shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's another thing that you've talked about, and that's uh, getting mentors early. And yeah. Someone I heard you talk a lot about is is your friend Agree. Yep. And rest in peace. Rest in peace. So, yeah, God bless Rich. Richard Castellano. So he moved to... Uh, Albuquerque from from uh, Brooklyn and down he, by the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and that was because his mom got in some beef. Yeah, that's the that's one of the stories that I heard. Um, that she she was an alcoholic and she was mentally ill, and supposedly she got into a bar fight and broke a pool stick over a lady's back that was connected to we could have been bikers or mafia. Mm. But she was told, you fucked up bad. You need to bounce because it's not going to be cool for you. Damn. And you may be threatened. Um, uh, they're my buddy Rich. Uh, part two of that is I heard from the writer Caves, um, K-A-V-E-S, that knew Agree back in the day in New York. And he told me about a night that uh, Agree was trying to earn his stripes and really wanted to paint in the train yards with those guys. And they were kind of hazing him, making him earn it. And uh, so they took him to the yard, but they were like, uh, you can't come in with us. You got to stay in the car, you know. And in fact, you need to stay in the trunk. And so they locked him in the trunk. And uh, they came back. Everything's cool. They checked on him. He was fine. And then they, uh, they took him home. And when they got him home to drop him off, he was passed out from carbon monoxide poisoning. Damn. And I think they just, like, left him unconscious on the steps and hit the door doorbell. That's some shady 80s New York shit right so, there. So, goddamn. I, you know, hearing that, and his mom was already pretty mentally ill, I, you know, and if, in fact, that other, the fight thing was true, they had reason to bounce. Yeah. And I really think they were thinking, we want to go where nobody's going to find us. Right. A lot of people end up in Albuquerque that are, on that path. Right, right. Hiding right. out. Yeah. And it's a great place to do that. Yeah. It's cheap. Yeah. 
and there's always been incredible access to drugs. Right. You know, so it's just, it's one of those places. So he definitely brought that New York style to, Straight up. to your town. Absolutely. And and you just met a, a, on, at a yard? Uh, that's a great story. He, uh, I was on, okay, on Friday night, on the uh, college radio station in Albuquerque, KUNM, uh, 89.9 FM. It's still around. I've been, I've been on that radio station. Okay. Shout out to my boy DJ Shakedown. There you go. So you, so there was a show called Street Beat that was on on Friday nights, and it was the only time you'd hear real hip-hop on, mm-hmm. the, on the radio, usually from 10 to midnight, and then from midnight to 1, they might play electronic music, dance mm-hmm. music, house and stuff. Um, so I had gone to England, Bought a bunch of mixtapes of house music there that wasn't going to be released even probably in America. So I had this golden tickets, all these tapes. So I heard house music on the radio. I called them up, was like, you want to trade? And they were like, fuck yeah, get your ass up here. So the next weekend I went up there and got to be friends with them. And uh, then they put me on the air sometimes. And uh, at the time, we all knew about Agree. We'd been seeing his stuff. Didn't know how to get in touch with people, you know, pre-internet. A priest, cell phones, all that shit. He called the radio station and asked for me and was like, yo, this is a green. He had this crazy Brooklyn accent. It was so legit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe it. And he was like, let's hang out tomorrow. You got a car? And I was like, yeah, I'll come get you. And so I picked him up, and then we went and picked up uh, his friend Doc, who was from uh, Venice Beach. Mm-hmm. And we went and to paint a wall and they wanted me to paint with them, and I fully was, like, not worthy, like Wayne's World. Like, dude, I'm not worthy. I'm not. I'm just going to sit this one out. And they hooked up a piece for me and showed me kind of how they used the paint and stuff and the yeah. different caps and uh, asked me to be down with their crew, and that was that. I was just... That's awesome. I got the full... And that's the thing with Doc's influence, too. I had the best of the West and the East. Yeah. You know? Because Doc was part of the WCA lineage. Okay, like yeah, Risky yeah. and yeah. all those kind of people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I really, really lucked out. Yeah. And they were both there to kind of hide out. Right. You know? Was, and we're still fucking maniacs. What was Doc's, <laughs> you know? Doc's reason for being in L.A.? Or being uh, in Albuquerque? Cocaine. Okay. I think he was selling coke. Mm. And, uh... He had a rap, a, a, you know, he was going to get in some trouble, and his father knew a professor friend at the University of New Mexico, I think in the photo department, and knew that Luke had interest in that. So he got accepted to UNM and got a scholarship <laughs> or whatever <laughs> and ended up in uh, Albuquerque that's crazy. and took amazing photographs, learned wow. from some really, that they actually have an incredible photo program at, at UNM. Yeah, yeah, it's a good university. Yeah, but that's... he'd get like his student loan money, dude, and he'd buy cocaine and spray can nozzles. Yeah. Like all of it. That sounds... And then he would just sell us caps for cha- for money through yeah. for until he got the next check he had it so down dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> such a maniac but a terrible scary person right. violent and yeah. even threatened me yeah. many times when he would just be too drunk you know yeah he was really racist too uh, you know it's just one of those things man he was a tough dude to get along with yeah Al- albuquerque is really on some breaking bad shit man I couldn't watch Breaking Bad because it was way too real. It's too real, yeah. I've been talking about, you know, like those bald-headed gangster kids with the fucking sweatsuits and it's 100 degrees with the hood pulled up, just lurking around on fucking speed, you know? And, oh, that kid's got a bicycle. That looks nice. Let's try to steal that, you know? And I'm like, fuck, and, like, (laughs) running for my life. Yeah. (laughs) And they're on tweak. I don't understand what's happening. (laughs) That that's a that's a crazy environment to get your start in the graph world. And but the the mentorship of those guys is huge because mentorship is a big thing in graffiti. Because it's one of those things. Oh, it's still essential. Exactly. It's one of those things there's only so much you can figure out on your own. You kind of need to share knowledge with other people for techniques, spots, supplies. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I was just uh Pointing out the uh, Frisco one line style right. tags to my girl just driving around right. earlier. Right. Um, and I was explaining to her that that's probably one of the few graffiti styles that you still need to learn locally. 
Right. Like you're not really seeing that Frisco one flow in Paris or Germany no, or no, Tokyo, yeah. unless it's one of those Frisco bo- bus yeah. bomber kids. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, to Remyo. I was in Paris with Remyo. He was busting uh, out some some bus flows out there. That's fresh. Yeah. And yeah. see, they'd be savvy for that shit. Yeah. And the, the you know the the hot people would know. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh shit, yeah, exactly. that's legit. Yeah, it's one of those things. If you can't pull that off in Frisco, that's not a. Good I never thing. learned it. Yeah, but if you're from Frisco, like That's growing the thing, up, though. I could have. Yeah, uh, my man Renos can do it really good. Oh, for sure. And he uh, he was always like, oh yeah, I mean it's just an alphabet. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude. Yeah, <laughs> Renos. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah, those guys are really uh, teaching. It sounds like you're learning the game and you're getting better and you're, you're starting to experiment yeah. with characters. That's the thing. And... Learning how to steal, how to mm-hmm. uh, case spots, how to get good photos. Um, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the one thing I, tutoring. I, one thing I heard you say that you got from them, and this is this is a philosophy that I got from my mentors and people I look up to, like Crayon and, and another cast, is mm. that the end goal is to be able to by yourself bust out a full burner color scheme, background, character, production. To be able to do that is like the height of, of graf- right. graffiti writing culture. Right. I was talking about that last night, too, with the younger writers that, like, you know, you can do a throw-up over a tag. You can do a simple yeah. style over a throw-up. And then it levels up to, you know, up to a full wild-style production with characters and background illegally at night. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. where we were yeah. in 93, 4, after the earthquake in 89 and the pits were still yeah. open when I moved here in 93 and uh bless AWR was really the one that was showing us what the fuck was up because mm-hmm. you know we'd show up sometimes to do like a simple style over a wall of throw ups and bless it just on a full wild style burner yeah and you're like dude how yeah how you know, but then you're like, well, he fucking did it. Yeah. Obviously, it can be done. It's possible. So yeah. now we got to step this shit up. Yeah, it's a good way to challenge yourself to, yeah. to reach, to reach but he, that level. That's the thing that's kind of, I don't know. He's kind of, I don't think he's underrated. I think people know about Bless and how, you know, influential he was. He might be a little, uh, uh, you know, there's an interesting thing about graffiti fame nowadays and how people know certain writers. and. Uh, well, and he never... He didn't pursue it, too. When he went into tattooing, he yeah. didn't want anybody to know he was blessed. Yeah. Whereas exactly. a lot of us, you know, like, people know me as Mike Giant, you know, I, ca- I definitely kept the association. Yeah, you've adopted a public persona, I guess. That was a real yeah. issue once we started tattooing. Right. Because it was like, we knew that part of our clientele draw would be from graffiti writers that knew about us and we had rep in that scene. Right. But do we want to include our graffiti name in our, our new business. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so some did and some didn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, in yeah. respect to either, you know, I don't really give a shit. No, for sure. But uh, it's it's interesting that way. And you also remember of SB? Yeah, Chicago. That's Chicago, right? Chicago Spray has a real, real, real deep graffiti Strictly business. history that a lot of people don't realize. Like, Chicago, Chicago goes deep. People don't know about Chicago. I don't think they do. Jesus. Yeah. I even had the best of both worlds in Chicago because I was yeah. also in DTE from Northside. So okay. I was in a crew from Northside and Southside. Mm-hmm. And they're vastly different. Yeah. Still Puerto Rican right. through and through. And so, <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, at um, least in the worlds that I was rolling through, like the the writers in Chicago, a lot of them were yeah, Puerto Rican. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Zor, Zor is fucking Zor. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, Zor put it down out here for a long yeah. time as well. Oh, yeah. He rolled through Albuquerque. Him, Rafa, and Agent, and... uh destroyed and racked so much. One of the craziest crazes, uh, chases of my life was with Zor. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, that <laughs> dude's great. Yeah. He, uh, he, and, he was cool because he showed me the way of flaring a tag so that the flares always go out away from the center Yeah. versus a flare that might go always up when you're reaching to a, t- a high spot. Right, or like right. that Philly style where they'll flare up and they'll flare down yeah, with like yeah. the wickeds and whatnot or whatever you call them. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zor had that flare style. So it just was this like clean little Zor in the center and just flares off every direction. Mm-hmm. And he would just, the way he would turn his wrist 
Mm-hmm. And the, the, the can would, the ball would bounce around. It was such a crazy thing to see. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's exciting, especially as those techniques are, like, kind of first being developed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and those kind of things go away, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know anybody that's doing those tags like that right. these days. Right, You know? But, yeah, that was a big deal. And just, like, the... Chicago is another one of those kind of walking cities. So there's like all the alleys and those brick buildings and then the elevated line. Agent yeah. was like the king of the elevated lines when I was there visiting. Yeah, I was going to say that their transit system has a long history. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah. CTA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hard to hit, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I remember going to raves in Chicago and you could see your breath because it was so cold in those like warehouses and everybody all the dudes were packing because mm-hmm. everybody had beef mm-hmm. but everybody was there to like do ecstasy and dance with the girls <laughs> so they kept it cool right. but i'd look around and everybody was You're packing like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah even for my kid for albuquerque like yo yeah. Some of us are bagging, but not everybody, you know? (laughs) So Baltimore was like that, too. For sure. We would joke, you know, because a friend would be, like, at the bar and just be, like, put his pistol on the counter, casual, and then just put it back, and everybody would laugh, like, oh, shit. And then they'd put theirs up, and he'd put his up, and he'd put his (laughs) up, and he'd put his up. And you're like, damn, I had no idea. (laughs) Wow, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you mentioned England earlier, and yeah. um, uh, it sounds like um, like some of the stuff you're seeing in Europe uh, in those times also had an influence. I was in I was into everything. Yeah, if it was dope and it had crazy technique with the spray can and style, I was in. And I was a crazy photo trader mm-hmm. even from the Albuquerque days. I'd get like twelve sets of all my thirty five millimeter photos. And uh, send them all over the world yeah, and get that, that shit back. That was like before Instagram. It was about trading. I still flicks. have them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was trading with people in England, um, a bunch. There was a few people in England, all over. And uh, so I was getting to see really cool, cutting edge, wild. No, shit. which is dope because that's access to some on the other side of the world. You wouldn't yeah. be able to see it. Otherwise. And I would replicate that stuff sometimes. Yeah. I remember yeah. my sister did a Europe trip and went to like Paris and Italy and photographed just the blockbuster silvers along the train rides mm-hmm. and they were very very particular regional styles yeah, just like sure. everywhere back yeah, in the day yeah but i would do like paris style silver blockbusters in albuquerque and right. people would be like what the fuck is that and then i'd show them a photo of the track side i saw i'm like damn that's straight up paris style you just right, did and i'm right, like yeah right. that's what i'm saying right. isn't that weird right. isn't that crazy style and, yeah. and Albuquerque, too, uh, I, I think I heard you mention that, like, the tag banging thing started yeah. coming. Yeah, well, from. sure, sure. I mean, once that... We don't really have that in the Bay, so I don't know if yeah, people know. Yeah, that's, like, like, more of that, like, Southern California, yeah. Arizona, New Mexico, that kind of cholo culture. I still don't quite understand it, because it's not gang banging. it's it just, tag banging. It just stepped up a level, that's all. Like, you know, we would get into fist fights and stuff, over graffiti writing, but like, um, yeah, we we would never shoot somebody. Yeah, and it's just like the gangster kids started writing graffiti, and they kind of came from going to that level right away. And there were certain graffiti kids, like the hip hop kids, that were attracted to that. It was a, that next level of extra sketchy or whatever. Yeah, you know. But I didn't really pay them much mind, to be honest. You know. Yeah. There was a situation in Albuquerque where I had done a full-color piece and some other graffiti writer, who I won't name, but he knows who the hell he is, he wrote, uh, I think it was OFA, over my piece. And OFA was a tag-banging crew. You know, so I was like, damn, why would they fuck with me? Yeah. You know? And I was like, but, but fuck them, dude. They went over my shit. So I wrote some shit like, fuck it, OFA. Bring it. You know, I don't give a fuck. And I, you know, I think I went back soon after that and redid the piece and whatever. Mm-hmm. And people were like, yo, those dudes are tag bangers. Like, you, that's bad. And I was like, fuck them. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And I was getting gas one afternoon. It was a car full of kids rolled up, all sketchy like. You know, it's when they roll up like that, yeah. something bad's going to happen. You see it in right. Instagram videos all the time now. <laughs> right. Running out the car with guns and shit. Right. So these fools roll up on me. And they're like, what's up, fool? You know, we're OFA. You got beef? And I was like, 
I don't know. Do I? Did you guys go over my piece? You know what I'm talking about? And they were like, nah, fool, we didn't do that shit. And I was like, well, we got beef with whoever did that shit, both of us. <laughs> right. right? That's right? a good answer. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. That's how I saw it. Yeah. Like, we have a common enemy. Yeah. We need to find out who did that. You know, because you know I'm just sticking up for myself. I'm not, you know, and I don't really know you guys. I don't have anything against you. I didn't write that, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm just dealing with the situation. And they were like, all right, fool, you know, if you if you hear, you let us know. If we hear, we'll let you know. And I was like, right on. We're good. And, it was, you know, totally switched it, yeah. you know? And then uh, we did, I think we did find out who did it, and I think those kids served him. Oh, shit. Beat his ass bad. But he was getting a lot of beatings. He was a sketchy fool. Yeah, yeah that's mean. <laughs> That's the thing. That's a bad shit to do to set somebody up like that. Yeah. That's the yeah, lowest that of the shit, low. That shit does Some happen. Junky though. shit. Yeah. yeah. Some <laughs> shit for real. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So what, what brought you to San Francisco? Think skateboards. So you were, you got the job while you yeah. were in Albuquerque? Yeah. And you were working for them from there? Yeah, they how asked did, me to do some freelance for them. How did they get in touch with you? I was working at a skateboard shop, and I in ordered all the skateboards. Uh, yeah. So I, I remember just one afternoon... It, talking to the the sales guy, I think, and was like, hey, man, I could sell more of your boards if the graphics were better. The kids mm. like your brand. And frankly, I could draw better than what you're offering. Mm. And he was like, fuck you. Fucking send some drawings. And I was like, is your access fine? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, give me the address. I'll send them today. Mm. And I did. Manila envelope. They bought uh, like three or four letter type things, you know, yeah. to use as stickers and whatnot. And then uh, I did just kind of continued from there. I was started to work for Tribal mm -hmm. right around that same time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they invited me to meet them in San Diego at the ASR trade show. It's like the big skate trade show back then. And I met everybody. They gave me ecstasy for the first time. You know, nice. had a great fucking time. <laughs> and uh, offered me a full-time job doing graphics for them. Fuck, and at that point, they thought I would just stay in Albuquerque. How old were you? Mm. 21. That's a hell of a job 22. to get at 21 years Well, that's the thing. I was in, I think, the fourth year of college. I was on full scholarship, architecture program, program art education kind of stuff was what I was taking. And, uh, you know, I could have just stayed for another two years, got a degree and whatnot. Uh, but even my professors were like, you have an opportunity to make art for a living, to draw, and that's what all, all you do. That's all I see you do. Yeah, go do that. Have fun. Come back to architecture when you're old. Were you even able to, like, wrap your head around it at the time? Like, oh, this is my career path. Or was it just like, um, oh, I got a job. I get to draw. I'm finna do... I think I was clear that this was a path. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I'd be working full-time as a graphic artist, you know? And I knew it wasn't, like, end game. Yeah. So after, like, four years of it, I was like, okay. Yeah, I've exhausted the possibilities here. Like, I should bounce and let somebody else do this like job. in terms of skateboard design yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, how many skateboard graphics can you do? Skate I still actually enjoy doing it, yeah. but, you know, doing it all day, every day is just like, okay. Well, skate skate graphics <laughs> is its own genre of art, yeah. too. It's, oh, it's cool. Yeah. It's kind of like graffiti because it's impermanent, yeah. inherently. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you take that shit out, you destroy the, the, the graphic. Board, yeah, it's funny yeah, that way, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Put so much effort into it. <laughs> but when you think about the classic skateboard art, like, like yeah. um, uh, Santa Cruz skateboards, yeah, the, right. the hand logo. That's the stuff. I, I started skating in 83 or 4. So, yeah, I was all up in that. And instead of designing remotely, you decided I'm going Well, out. what happened was this sales guy had a roommate that moved out and was like, hey, man, you know, you got the job. With that check, you could afford the room that I have. You want to just come out here and help me out? And then, you know, you're close and it'll be easier. And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I talked to everybody, my parents about it, and like, do it. Sounds great. Like, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just jumped on it. And even the first day I showed up, they weren't expecting me to be there, you know? And I was like, no, no, it's cool. Like, it's all good. And they were like, no, fuck, we're going to get you an office right now. And, like, stuffed me into a closet-sized space with the other art guy that was there. Where was their office? Uh, Hunter's Point. Oh, like, like Ingalls uh, yeah. and Yosemite. Uh -huh. Yeah. And where were you? Where was your, where was your apartment? Western Edition. Okay. So I took the five Fulton all the way downtown to the 153rd and then took that out. So I rode with all the sweatshop workers from Chinatown every yeah. every day, you know? It was a crazy adventure. Had you been to, to San Francisco before that? No. Wow. No. I heard all about it because I had skater friends that would come up and, like, 
literally sleep in Embarcadero. Oh, yeah. You know, you know yeah, all that. That's when all I was that pointing was that cracking. out to my girl today. Yeah, yeah. That was a whole thing. That shit EMB. Was back then. Yeah. yeah. So when I got I got here in 93, EMB was just about done. That's At a, least that, yeah, that real yeah, moment. That phase of it, yeah. Yeah. Of the, the worldwide skate mecca. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a shitty place to skate, oddly. Those fucking bricks yeah. with little wheels. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, after they put the, um, the, those crazy little barriers, barriers yeah, yeah, on there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's bullshit. But yeah. Yeah, even back then, I was like, wow, all, all this fuss over this. Huh. It's just kind of I came cool. from Albuquerque. We had miles of ditches that were yeah. like these crazy half pipes for miles. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, stuff like that. We were like, no, this would not be the hot spot in town. <laughs> I think this also has to do with just the scenery the, right yeah. there on the water. And the they didn't get hassled. Yeah. That was the thing. It was there a big was not, open. There wasn't much else going on. No, especially on the weekends because all the workers are gone. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you must have tripped out when you got to to Frisco, and because in '93, this is the heyday of of local rap. This is the heyday of graffiti. Man. It's yeah. like crazy. You have people yeah. from all over the world coming to to paint for right. in Frisco. Yeah, skateboarding. Yep, the art scene. All these things. You must have yep. been like, "Fuck yeah, this is." That's the thing, this man. The this city be. was the mecca on so many levels. You know. Yeah. And now when I roll around, those are gone. Yeah, yeah. It's a trip, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a trip. And I'm just so thankful that I was here in the 90s to see all that and experience it, you know? Yeah. And the good and the bad, you know? Yeah, off top. It was one of those things, but, man, yeah, it was just so popping. I remember every night you had to decide what you wanted to check out, right. whether it be a rap show or a metal show or a breakdancing battle or a house party. Yeah. You know? Oh, man, it was just so much happening. Yeah, it was like a big-ass playground. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the whole city, too. Yeah. You know? When we, when you saw the the graffiti scene coming from Albuquerque, we were like, oh, okay, I'm I'm about to jump in this. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a step up, for sure. Yeah. It was like, oh, fuck. But I did have great teachers. I did have good technique. Mm -hmm. I did go big. Mm -hmm. I went a bigger than people kind of did usually mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. California. I noticed I was, yeah, I jumped right in doing it. At, and, and, and again, like you're saying, like people like Crayon yeah. and seeing, you know, vastly different style than yeah. what I had ever seen between Los Angeles and New York. For sure. You know, yeah, yeah the Bay had that, yeah, that other style, you know, that, that, that funk. Or the, the funk versus new wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what, that's around I the time was, all that shit was cracking off. Some yeah. of that new wave stuff, I was really feeling. Mm -hmm. I was in BA with uh, Neon, mm -hmm. you know, and he did a lot of that. He was yeah. a pioneer in that. And, uh, yeah, I was just, that's the thing. It was such an interesting city and place and, you know, and even the East Bay had different styles. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? definitely. yeah. Like, uh, Giggs was a guy I remember yep. a lot that fucking just burned all the time. Yep. And that wasn't, like, crazy intricate. It was just, like, really sweet letters. Yeah. Yeah. And clean, that was, like, a styles. whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was lucky to be in Cruise from the East Bay, too. Right. Yeah. Because I would go out there every weekend, take mm -hmm. Bart out, and, like, Buku would pick me up. Mm -hmm. And we'd go cruising around and I remember he would just be rhyming while we would be yeah, driving yeah. and didn't think anything of it. it was just like oh it's just something he did and then later on he ended up touring and doing that for a living and yeah. it's still like that dude you know yeah, and yeah, for sure. I just I just thought it was funny it was just Tion rapping you know yeah. but I should have been taping that shit in the backseat <laughs> man you know Oh, man. And you got to experience uh, Psycho City. In yeah. It was the right? first place I went to when I it's moved here. It was the place. one place I, people told me it's where Hate Street meets Market Street. Yeah. And I lived in the Western Edition, and I filled up a backpack with paint, and I hopped on my skateboard, having no idea how to navigate the hills, and just thought, oh, Hate Street. I just need to go down Hate Street all the way to Market, and didn't realize it's, like, straight down. So... I made the rookie mistake and got going too fast and had to ride it out right into Market Street. Almost got hit by a car, a bus, <laughs> had to bail on the board at the railroad tracks, jumped over a car on the over the hood, rolled. People clapped because I didn't die. You know, that was like, and it's, it was right out of a fucking movie. It'd be a great scene to do in a movie because I literally, on my hands and knees, I look up and there's Psycho City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just almost died. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Bombing H yeah. Street. And then you're looking up at this crazy graffiti. Got yeah, and there was levels gallery. of it, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, there was a lot of history there. Yeah. Because some people were able to get really up high somehow right. in Those certain runners, spots. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like uh, every crew from the bay had something there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's place. And even by the time I got there in 93, it was already kind of coming down. Right. Because they had that, like, was it a rock steady? Thing or they had like a meeting at Psycho City. I think I've seen the Maybe pictures. Maybe ninety one. Yeah. You're right. There's yeah, lots of pictures because like the cop cars got there. tagged. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the cops are just like, what the fuck? And, yeah. You know, and everybody's just like, there's just there were hundreds of people. Right. Yeah, I think there was a picture. That's the first time I saw Grime. He has a, like a wild style Grime piece across his back, and it mm. was this kid with this shirt pulled up, and it was like, oh shit, that's Grime. Mm. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he was there. He'd, yeah. be, an, he'd be a neat guy to talk to. As yeah, well. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've heard you talk about how uh, Jace was someone who really oh, put yeah. you on to the freights. Yeah, and, 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 Jace. He put me on to a lot of things, man. How'd you guys meet? Uh, I think through a soap. Okay, I was gonna ask about soap too. Soap and Felon and Jace. Cause that's the whole Baltimore. Uh, that was kind yeah. Of that was those were my first partners when I got here. Cause I think I was trading photos with a kid uh, SMK back east, and he was cool with soap and would send me photos of soap pieces. And so you know, I had like an address or a phone number or something when I first moved here. I had like three numbers, mm. and I think. I think if I remember correctly, uh, the first place I painted, other than Psycho, the first night piece, was in the uh, the upper end of the DuBose Tunnel. Okay. And Soap showed me the ropes of how the trains come in and out, and there's timing in between, and yeah. you can hide against the walls. Yeah. Um, and that was like... It's still my favorite place to paint in the whole world. Oh man, it's magic in I, there, I, man. I'm still it's heartbroken. Like timeless. That it's buff. It's buff yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. When I was in there, I was able to see all those twist heads. No, uh, no. And Mars was doing stuff back then. There, that was there, all crazy. there were times and, I would just walk through there just just yeah. to drink a what was, beer. And what was the shortcut? Around. Yeah. So you didn't have to climb the hill if you yeah. knew. Yeah. yeah. All the heads knew. Yeah. That was a nice walk through yeah. there. Crunch, exactly. crunch, crunch on those yeah. rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was a big deal to hold down the entrance and the exit. Right. You know? So I always tried to have a piece at the entrance and at the exit right, as close right, as right. I could where the trains were going the slowest. Right. But if people went over it, I had to go back within days to reclaim that spot. Yeah, there's a lot you of know? competition for That's for, the for thing. Spots like but I re that tunnel in particular. Yeah. Yeah. I've had so many fun adventures in there i've had sex in there i've seen <laughs> dead bodies in there mm. all kinds of shit yeah. man we used to go down there and there'd be like a crew of like 30 fucking graffiti writers with boom boxes and 40s yeah. having a literal party in Chilly. the middle of the tunnel just yeah. doing pieces yeah no care in the world yeah you know yeah it was yeah. a magic place yeah yeah it still is yeah it's just, you yeah. know, like the place itself is still interesting. Sure. It's yeah, still fun yeah. to take people down there, yeah. and they're like, oh, Mike, the train's coming. I'm like, you just got to get sucked up in the wall, and they're like, no <laughs> shit, and you can just reach out and touch the train as it <laughs> zooms by at, like, 60. It's <laughs> <laughs> so scary. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, what what was, because uh, I, I know a lot about Soap's work. I don't know yeah. about, too much about him. Oh, yeah, himself. I'd love to talk about Bill. He was my dude. He was a... F uh, uh, a flawed character, yeah. too. He had uh, substance problems. He was a lifetime alcoholic. He was a terrible womanizer, too. Mm. He would get into all kinds of beef with women. Um, those, but are, he, those are kind of common problems for a lot of the writers. It's one of those things, like, he just was a player, man. Yeah. I think he might have been a sex addict on some level. I'm pretty sure that, actually. Like, we would... We would get together, I think it was Thursday nights when they would do the new episodes of 90210 and Melrose Place. Mm -hmm. And we had this crew of girls, these college girls that we kicked it with that were super rad. They were all from Baltimore, too. And uh, we would take ecstasy and watch those two shows. And during the commercial breaks, Soap and his lady would go in their room and fuck it out real quick <laughs> and come back. <laughs> they're, they're, every, every bar we'd go to, they'd go fuck it out in the bathroom real quick. They were, oh, my God. But that's just, like, that's the thing. Looking back, like, yeah, maybe there might have been some addiction there. Yeah, you know, like, we just thought it was extreme. cute that yeah. they were, like, that in love with each love. other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, he was just, yeah, he was that dude just at a 
and he was really handsome and tall and had that, like, East Coast kind of hardcore style. He'd have, like, the creased uh, black dickies with the oxblood docks mm -hmm. and a nice white T-shirt, and he had, like, an oxblood um, Vespa, you know? Yeah, and he just, uh, I'm, you know, he... He was so great because we would just be walking down Marcus Street in the middle of the afternoon and he would just be catching these uh, tags with those silver pilot pens mm -hmm. and he'd show me to grind them in the street first to get the felt broken yeah, up yeah, so you yeah. get nice get and fat and you didn't get yeah. it to drip sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he would just be catching tags and people would come up and be like, hey, stop doing that, stop that. And he'd be like, look him right in the eye, what? And keep doing the tag, not looking at it, you know? <laughs> Stop doing what you're doing right there. I don't know what you're talking about. And you do the little flourish <laughs> under the tag. And look at me like, oh, let's go. I don't know what this crazy person's talking about. <laughs> he was so casual about it. And that's what made people furious in him yeah. is his, his cockiness. Uh -huh. Yeah. But um, he was great. Like, uh, we were at a house party, actually at the house where the girls, we would watch TV with them. And this dude kept, came by, and he was... Um, I think at that point he was being mentored by Bless. Mm -hmm. And for some reason he just started talking shit to me, calling me in like legal eagle and shit, you know, just gets under your skin. I just didn't understand it because I'm a real peace loving dude and I, I didn't know this fool. But he was calling you legal eagle? Yeah. Like, like I just do day spots. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not really up. I'm yeah. not really doing it. Right, and I was right. like, fuck you. Yeah. So we got into an argument again, which was really weird. And Soap and Felon kind of helped egg it along, and we're like, you guys should race. And we are like, what do you mean? And it was like, three weeks. Like, who can do the most full-color pieces? No bitch tags, no throw-ups, no stamps. Nice color pieces. Who can do the most in three weeks, and then we'll see who's fucking the legal eagle. Mm. You know? And I was like, I'm in. And Kep was like, I'm in too. So we set it off right away, and I think Kep got caught maybe five or six nights in of the, the three weeks. Yeah. And then kind of played it off and talked a lot of shit. But I kept going. I ended up doing 20 pieces in the 21 nights. It was one night I just was by myself. Because uh, that's really when I bonded, I feel like, a lot with Soap and Felon. Because they were my lookouts through the whole thing. So, like, every night I was living up on Bush and Powell. And uh, I would just have to be downstairs at a certain time. Because they couldn't even ring my bell. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a pager. But there they would be. Yeah. 40s and bags and cans and ready to go. You know, and they'd have spots already thought out if I didn't have a particular spot. Yeah. And then they we ended up, they were looking out for me down by, like, in the financial district, kind of close to the Embarcadero. What's that mall that's down there? Oh, the Embarcadero Mall? Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So it was down near there. I, it was a spot where I had to hop a fence and I could do a nice piece because you couldn't see, you know, the traffic from the street and it was super quiet at night. And they were supposedly looking out for me, but they were actually doing lots of tags and drinking and acting amok. And a homeless guy actually got on a payphone and called the cops and was like, there's guys doing graffiti right here. I can ID them. Because they were trying to get in nice with the cops as, like, favors. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. So my phone and, and soap got wrapped up. I heard the whole thing going down. They were like, we weren't doing anything. We weren't doing anything. And the cops were like, get on the fucking ground, you know? And I was like, oh, shit. So I dipped. I ran the other direction, hopped over a fence, and just ran mm. and got away. But then went back to uh, their girlfriend's place and was like, hey, I think they're in jail. Shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, yeah. fuck. But <laughs> I got to work in the morning and yeah. I got to go. But <laughs> yeah. just know if they don't come home tonight, they're probably in jail. And you yeah. might want to just go to the Chinatown station to check yeah. you know, in the morning. Um, and I was able to bail out Felon myself, but... Soap had previous stuff and warrants, so he was in for a few weeks, mm. you know. But he had a lot of heart. He'd come out of it refreshed, yeah. and, you know, they'd teach him some scandalous shit, how to unlock something or other, you know, when he's in yeah, jail. Yeah, 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 right. He shows us the new, new tricks. skills, yeah. 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 yeah, but he he was great, you know. He ended up, uh, I was in New York City, and I ran into him, and I hadn't seen him in years, and I, I didn't even know that he was in New York City. Super random. And I asked him what he was doing, and he told me and all this stuff. And then he ended up being found in a, a building that was burning down like a week later. And I found out everything he had told me was a lie. Wow. It was really, you know, it was a trippy thing. Like, he had no reason at all to lie to me. Yeah. And we still don't know under exactly what circumstances he died. 
you know? But that was that was a trippy thing, you know? Yeah, that's that's a yeah. That's Wait, but story. again, it's like a kind of a exciting way out, you know? It's like he was living that life, yeah, and we, you know, true to his life. There's so though. many friends of mine that when I hear they pass away, and I I hear it's like an overdose or something. It doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. That's life. I mean, but God bless that dude. Yeah, I, I, I love him. But well, he he was a complicated dude. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the lifestyle of graffiti. You know, it tends to attract certain personalities. Not yeah. everybody, but yeah. you, you got to be a little crazy to go yeah. out at night and fucking write. It's a spray paint. fucking stupid thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> but it's you know, it's addictive, yeah. and it has this whole culture, and people, you know, you, you get respect within this culture that's earned, and I think, oh man, that's gonna sound sexist, but it seems like men need that. You know, well, it's, like a, that, it's a good uh, way to challenge yourself, or deal with you, adversity. See where you stand. And I'm not much out. of like a MMA guy. Yeah. I'd rather flex on you with a spray can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, than wrestle. It, it's, it can be a destructive it's lifestyle, certain. but it's also way more positive and productive it than can a be. lot of other it shit. It can be. Yeah. If, yeah, there, it's it's neat that there's so many people with real mental health problems, and the graffiti writing is really the thing that's keeping them uh, yeah. alive and, yeah, and an focused. And, yeah. Yeah. Even like uh, Jace. You know, I think he always conceded that graffiti saved him from a life of actual crime. Yeah. He was doing some wild shit back in the day and then got hooked on graffiti and was like, oh, I'll parlay that energy into this. Yeah, I know a lot of people who have those yeah. kinds of stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Every every time with him was an adventure. Yeah. So fun. Just in terms, even just in terms of alcohol like consumption, how much we would go through yeah, on just like one mission uh, to the East Bay to do trains. He's spoken <laughs> about that pretty openly. Oh, it's wild, though. Yeah. 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 It's like almost every time I'd look to the left or the right to see where he was in the freight yard, he'd be peeing. Yeah. And none <laughs> of his, so much And beer. none of that's water. Yeah. No. Nah, <laughs> no. Nah. But that was the thing with him, especially. Like, I, I loved hanging out with him and painting with him but if i wanted to i had to paint freights i had to you know it oh, was yeah, just he yeah. he wasn't really in, he thought doing walls was wasting paint straight yeah, up it's interesting the, the trains really seem to cause certain people like yeah people oh love it's nice trains, though man. you ever gone to a train yard yeah, yeah, all night it's just yeah. so quiet yeah. and peaceful so peaceful and about you, it, the yeah. the sounds of the action of the painting and stuff are really enhanced or sitting in the yard and watching watching oh, shit sure. roll by. that's fun too yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the, um, I used to love the auto cars, the holy rollers, we mm -hmm. call them. Yep. And they have that like perforated metal, the yep. little holes and yep. rows. And when you spray it, it, it kind of goes. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. And I love that sound. Yeah. Something about that with a fat cap and you just, in the, you know, because you're usually kind of out away from stuff too, in the weeds. Yeah, it's, it's and, in the cuts usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Jace knew where all those cut spots right, were. Right, right. Yeah. We, we did an adventure down to L.A. one Memorial Day, I think. And I just remember we got caught in the worst fucking traffic coming home, like deadlock in the desert for hours. But uh, I think he painted trains with a few guys, like, damn near 24 hours, you know? Like, I remember they would come home in the morning, and they'd refuel, eat and stuff, get some coffee, and they were like, oh, we're going to this next yard. You want to yeah. come? And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then it would be like midnight, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm back. we're back at the house. And they're like, all right, we're going to this place now. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm I'm done. Yeah. We, did, we did four <laughs> yards. Yeah. I'm not frit, dude, like you guys yeah. are. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to chill. That's a different kind they, of Yeah, they right go there. hard. Yeah. But that's kind of the thrill of it, too, is the adventure of all the different yards. I remember the yeah. Denver yard being exciting because it's like 30 lanes across. Mm. It's like the main hub, you know? Yeah. So those, the, yeah, and the train yards in Europe too are super fun. Oh, transit in, in yeah. Europe is the next level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sketchiest shit I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. London Transit. Oh yeah, they don't. Fuck yeah, around. the Brit Rail trains, the yeah. suburban trains. I was able yeah, to hit. Right. Yeah, that we the uh, metro, the the silver subway trains in London were eluded us a few times because they had to be parked in very particular places. If they were doing maintenance or something, they would park one off to the side. And that's when you had to jump on it. But you would take, like, a bus and a train, you know, for hours to get to the end right. of the line. Yeah. And then you look over the fence and you're like, oh, we came all this way for nothing. <laughs> right. Well, fuck. And then you miss the last train. So sometimes we would just be like like homeless ass motherfuckers just, just kicking wandering. it. Yeah. Or, you know, sitting in a park 
you know, at five in the morning, just like drinking beers, talking, because we just got to stay up until the first train yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, those are, those are good things too, bonding experiences. That's what I'm saying. Those are all the little things that you kind of, it's a, that's a lot to go through just to fucking write your name on a wall yeah. or something, man. Oh, and then, yeah. And then dealing with dogs and barbed wire and yeah. security guards and, yeah. yeah, real, real shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, did you ever get confused with Shepherd Ferry? Initially. Yeah. It still happens on occasion. Where people are like, oh, you're that giant guy. You do, yeah. You're Andre the Giant well, has a yeah. bossy. That's you true. know, it's kind of like one of those things that calls you out as a toy. You know, and I don't, I don't, I don't hate on them. It's just like, okay, bro, if you're somebody a toy, says that to you, yeah, you need yeah, to, you, yeah. I'll need to. Uh, but usually, I won't say anything. Yeah. I'll kind of go along with it and like, let them uh, figure it out on their own and be like, oh, I was such an idiot, <laughs> right. you know. But actually, I, I talked about ASR, the trade show, the skateboard thing earlier in San Diego. I think I ran into him the, the first time there. It might have even been that same show that I went um, in '93. And friends of mine were like, yo, that dude Shepard is here that does the giant shit. And I was like, oh, word, I want to meet him. And they're like, do you have beef with that guy? And I'm like, no, not really. And they were like, do you mind if we tell him you do? And I was like, no. So kind of rumors got around the trade show that when I met him, I was going to flex on him, you know. So he heard that. And I don't know if he would even remember this, but uh, when we met, he was really tentative, you know. And I was this big smile. I was like, oh, we're good, dude. You know, I love what you do. Because he was just doing posters and stickers. Well, it seems he like was he, doing he, he giant. Had, he had a lot of haters in the graffiti the, world, too, right? Well, yeah, because, you know. The whole street art versus graffiti type Shepherd of Shepard was always on his other trip, dude. I'll, I'll never hold anything against Shep, you know. Even now, I've been really critical of him. And I don't think he'll, he, he's really interested in talking to me right now. <laughs> but... Um, I just, you know, I just call it as I see it as a friend and just kind of was like, yeah. you know, but I've always appreciated what he did. And it, it never really crossed into the graffiti writing world ever. And you guys have you painted, know? painted together. Too, we right? did. Yeah. We did a few things in San Diego together. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the thing. I've never had anything against Jeff, you know? Yeah. Because I've just seen like... We talked in the early days, and it was all just this random ass experiment with this stupid fucking sticker that somehow jumped off, right. Right? right? And he didn't know. So for me, his whole career was about, well, let's see where this goes. You know, I just think that he's ended up kind of getting co-opted by the people that he initially was criticizing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. And but again, I understand, I understand he's got that. a family, he's got a staff, he's got a, a thing, and it's and it's got a life of its own, you know, and let it rip. It's kind of like he that, transitioned into making propaganda in a way. It's not necessarily bad propaganda. Unfortunately, or good it's propaganda, like the but... um, it's almost like a symbol of a neighborhood being gentrified. Yeah, it's like a Finch. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a weird, and that's the thing. I don't think that was part of his initial experiment and his criticism of popular culture. Yeah. He was a very counterculture person. Yeah, you know, came off that but way. But that's too. the thing. It's amazing that he ended up doing that poster for Obama and all that stuff. Yeah, and dealing with all the legal bullshit over that. Yeah, like I'm glad I didn't deal with that shit. Yeah. You know, but he stuck it out. No, it's interesting. People snitched on him and shit, you know? Right, like, right. That yeah. was a fucked up mess, yeah. you know? But, it's an yeah. interesting tra God bless trajectory that he's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I've never tripped on him. One thing I wanted to ask you about was your, your character style, bro. Oh, yeah, you characters. Play, you play some sick-ass characters. I'm glad people dig the characters. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely, like, your own style, yeah. too. Yeah, well, there's a formula to it. What, what it starts it? with two circles. Okay. Some eyeballs and some, yeah, it's just a grid there. for where the face is and where the eyes line up in the nose, just like you do for any kind of oh, yeah. cartoon Basic or something. Cartooning, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I have my own set of proportions that I use pretty much every time, which are honestly really <clears throat> um, related to some of the early twist characters that I saw, like ninety three, ninety four. That makes sense. He would sense. do like um, characters like with their pants down and their dicks hanging out, like yeah. you know, just kind of from like mid calf down or up you know we never i don't remember ever seeing him do i guess i did see somebody he did with feet but not very often right you know but just like a simple twist piece or twist o with a, a character and man just the, the ease and the the uh expression that he was able to get out of them you know and yeah i dug him but i was also super into the 
New York style characters. The B boy characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, FBA, Doe's, yeah. uh-huh. the Muggsies. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that was their thing. And I knew I needed to come with my thing. And I was also seeing the LA shit. Yeah. Like Realm. Right, Realm was right, a big right, one right. with the crazy characters. Yeah. You know, simple colors, yeah. kind of painted like the piece, you know, and then the, the crazy uh, light source mm-hmm. 3D shit mm-hmm. like Zodak, yeah, yeah. Hex, Slick. That shit was influential too. Right. Totally. Yeah, I bring this up because, uh, like I was saying earlier, to me, slapping a character on a piece just helps it stand out a little more. It gives it personality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you when you have like a character like yours or like King One Five Seven oh, his are so good or too. Twist, where people yeah. just know yeah. they see the character and they're like, Oh, that's him. That's And again, his style. it can be an identifier. Yeah. And I was telling the guys last night too, the writers, like, you know, I think it's still the same game we're playing because the oh, bottom yeah. line yeah. is being able to have a style that's recognizable no matter what no matter you do. What. A yeah. character, a, a word. You should be able to write any word and people, and people like, still be him. like, Oh no, so and so did that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a big thing. So I was really trying to figure out a way to Oh, you know another one was Ren and Stimpy was yeah, kind of in, influence yeah, yeah. and positioning. The characters um, do look kind of like crazy fingers. I would say like 90s. There's a 90s yeah. style to, to yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Ren and yeah. Stimpy is one of those things that was I kinda, did Ren and Stimpy on walls even sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and those was like Bon Bode characters. Right. Which is really where it came from. Absolutely. Those that like slouch yeah. in the oversized hands and feet, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at all of that. But again, it was a way to, like, most graffiti, regular people walk right by it. But you do a funny little dude, yeah. and they're like, oh, shit. I like doing it for kids. Oh, yeah, kids, kids like love it. Little cartoon kids characters love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I even got into it at 6th and Howard Street with a crackhead over, like, I, I was doing a piece there, and I did a nice character, and I had fingers like... Talking about the, like, the uh, fenestration? Yeah, that, yeah. W- that building. Yeah. And there was this uh, local dude that everybody called Slim. And I was like, I'll hit you up, Slim. So I hit up Slim. And uh, all the neighborhood people were so pumped to see Slim's name up there because he was bragging about it. And then he'd go over there and see it. And be like, oh, shit, the little dude is pointing to Slim's name, you know? And then months later, I wanted to paint over it. So I, I went back, painted over myself. And the whole time there's this crackhead lady fucking pissed that I'm painting over Slim's little dude, you know? And I didn't want to do a character that day. I was just wanting to do a piece. And she was not believing me at all that I was the same dude that did the piece underneath it because I didn't do a character, you know? (laughs) And sure enough, dude, I went home, got my camera, came back. Just an hour later, somebody had thrown, like, pink paint on the piece. (laughs) I think it was that lady, you know? And I was like, motherfucker, you know? This was all over just a character, really. She just was like, nah, you didn't paint the little dude. You, you You ain't the same dude. You gotta draw the little dude. And I was like, I don't feel like painting the little dude today. And like, it ain't you then, you're fronting. I was like, no. Yeah, the bullshit you deal with, man. It's crazy the type of relationship people who don't write will have to. Oh, yeah. It was fun how excited the crackheads would be to catch us writing. Oh, damn, you're doing the murals. Oh, shit. And we'd be like, yo, you need to shut the fuck up. We're doing felonies. Please be quiet. (laughs) Please go away. Sometimes we would give them a fiver to be security. Yeah. That was such a funny thing because we would make bets on what they were going to do. Because sometimes they would straight up be security. I, I got you. And they they keep an eye out, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, most of the time, they would just scurry off and yeah, go buy a rock you, and be like, here. "I'm out." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes, yeah, they would want to jibber jabber and shoot the shit with you. And you're like, "Can I give you money to leave?" Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're blowing up the spot right, right now. Right, yeah, right. that used to happen all the right, time. Right. Yeah, just the the madness out there. As you're you're as you're <laughs> writing, you're designing, you're what what like you have a strong work ethic, bro. Like, not just oh, with, work. with yeah. painting, but with yeah. your, your hustle, with your career. Yeah. What, how, how was that formulating during these times? Because you weren't one of those writers who's just like, I don't know, I'm just going to go out and fucking crush shit and then figure it out. You're, 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 you were sticking to your, your career as an artist at the same time. Yeah. And trying to push yourself as a writer. Yeah. Like, what were some things that were helpful for you to develop your discipline? Well, that was part of the game with graffiti. You you know, you had to be the best with the most. And, you know, you had to do it consistently. Consistency is the key in graffiti writing. And we were writing every single day, you know, um, in various forms, you know. So 
I mean, that was just inherent in it. You, you had to hustle. And also just kind of professionally, I feel like if I consistently sit down at the desk and draw every day, somehow everything gets paid. Do you ever miss a day? Ever miss? A day that you don't draw? No, there's days that I can't. Yeah. You know, there's days like this where, you know, I'm on the road or whatever. Sure, sure. You know, and there's some days when I'm just packing boxes all day. Right. Uh, it's all good. It's a nice balance, actually, the way I've got it worked out these days. But for the most part, you're sticking to the script. Most part, or... yeah. I mean, the, my favorite days are when I draw for six to eight hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. That's the jam. Yeah. But then I got to figure out how to turn that into some money. Yeah. Posters and whatnot. But again, it's really easy. What's what's some um, what's something that's been helpful for you to learn how to accomplish that for anybody else out there who wants to pursue a creative career? Well, you know, it, on one level, it's the same as the graffiti game. You got to figure out a way to have a distinctive, unique style that's recognizable. Yeah. And the only way to really do that is put your head down and do it. You can't really be looking at what other people are doing so much because it's just gonna slow you down on some level yeah you know but also you know if you think you're on to on track with a cool unique thing and your homie points out that looks just like so and so you have to eat that sometimes yeah and be like shit i gotta try harder it yeah. does look just like that person fuck but you think do you think the uniqueness creates a value that will attract clients and, and customers yeah and that even you can't bargain on like uh, I'm I'm so thankful that I have the following I do because I wouldn't really do what I do differently if it, I didn't have that. Well, you know it's, I mean? yeah, it's a trip so because you people, never can tell what people are going to be into. People know you as a graffiti writer, but they know Some, you they yeah. know you for your design as well. So it's yeah, kind of like really depends. It's like your graffiti over all the work you put in for graffiti has almost promoted you as a professional artist in a way. Oddly, dude, totally. Yeah. W we used to joke that you would never put that you're a graffiti writer on a resume. Yeah. Or even mention that in a context of talking to a gallery. Or a portfolio. And being like, oh, I have a yeah. rep in the graffiti scene. They'd be like, what? Yeah. You're a vandal? Yeah. Uh, no, we're good. We don't want vandals in the gallery. Thank you. Yeah, I know, you know? A, lot, I know a lot of really good writers that were turned away from art schools when they oh, showed sure. their portfolio and they oh, like, sure. oh, no, spray, spray paint But shit. again, you know, that might have been to the credit of the school. Like, nah, kid, you got to do this on the street. We don't teach that shit <laughs> That's here. That's true, yeah. Straight up. Yeah. You know, we're saving you some bullshit. Yeah. Like, nah, this ain't the place. Move to New York City, bro. I mean, the, other, <laughs> the other thing is, though, Mike, like, I know a lot of people who, like, have the skills and have the ambition to mm. transition into that world, but they, yeah. they're not quite able to figure it out. No, it's tricky. It's tricky. Although it's easier now than it's ever been. Because of the well, social media, yeah. mostly Instagram, mostly. Instagram. I mean, it's a picture medium yeah. at base. Yeah. Um, if you're making pictures, yeah. <laughs> share the pictures. Right. If people like the pictures, you know, they'll yeah. support you. That's true. You yeah. put print the pictures yeah, and figure they'll out buy what works and what and, doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not brain surgery. You know. I mean, when you started transitioning into this the space of like tattoos and fine art and and gallery shows and yeah. stuff. Did you encounter uh, any haters or any resistance or people like, oh, you're selling out or... or, or Not so much. People understood what, what you were going for. And I was always on a different trip. I was working at... I was drawing skateboards for a living. Yeah. Writing graffiti with all these kids that had jobs at, like, grocery stores or were selling coke or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Vast variety of different things. A lot yeah. of bike messengers. Right. You know? Um, so, and there was people like Twist. Um, that yeah. was I think parlaying he, he into... He set the standard the, for, for that. He I totally like, did. Yeah. At least, As a fine at least artist. In, in this part of the world. I think. Like damn that. Near the whole, well, that's, damn near, well I mean. that's the thing. Europe's had writers in museums. They were way far ahead of, actually. That's true, yeah. They yeah. were showing the New York writers when those New York writers weren't getting any play in the States. Right, right, right. The museums were like, Futura no way. Like, yeah, yeah, but in, in Paris, yeah. at the, you know, Palais, they were like, yes, bring right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that show that Twist did at Yerba Buena, yeah. I think in 93 or 4, that was fucking huge. Because we were all like, damn, a fucking real graffiti writer's up in this shit. And yeah. look what he did. Yeah. It ain't just graffiti on walls. He did, like, all this stuff. The bottles, he showed his, like, jacket that he had customized so he could steal paint better. Yeah. He did this huge Buddha that was, like, top to bottom in one of the rooms there, you know? 
and his uh, his lady, um, oh, Margaret yeah. Kilgallen, uh, Slaughter. M- 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 Meta, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a bunch of different yeah. uh, aliases. But, yeah, she did incredible work in there, too. Yeah. And that's an, you know, that was a, because she played in the graffiti game, too, but on her way, it was right. very folky. and Right. But so dope. I get, so I, I, I get so much inspiration out, 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 of, out of seasoned writers who've been able to parlay that into the art world. Yeah. Like, whether it's, like, Doug with Morning Breath. Yeah. Or, 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 oh, he's or had Twist such a cool or, career. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool to see that, all right, all this shit, is, as we're talking about, yeah, it's destructive. Yeah, it's just crazy. Yes, it's this. It's, but if you stick with it, it can really take you places. It can. But it kind of, you know, again, it's maybe not the graffiti that's taking you places. It's more that, like, mentality and that drive to be consistent and to know that you have to strive and it's competitive, and then you take that into other places. Yeah, and that's what I was asking about because yeah. I see, obviously, you, you know, you take this shit seriously. You're, you're, you could, yeah. Because I'm the same way. Yeah. My hustle, I, I look at, like, getting up. Like, I yeah. got to get up. I got yeah. to gotta bust a plan. I also I live in California. Move. It's expensive. Yeah, exactly. That part, that part. <laughs> I'm very conscious of that, that though. Like, yeah. you know, it's nice here, but it's more expensive so yeah, i gotta facts. i gotta hustle I, I gotta work every yeah. single day sometimes yeah even lately like just getting all the money together to pay the bills at the end of the month can be tight do you ever you know? do you ever find a conflict between your creativity and the business side of it where you had to make compromises no no not now you know when i was doing rebel eight um it got to the point where we were having to start making some compromises mm-hmm. you know and i felt like the the uh, owner had to make compromises for business that I didn't agree with, and that's when I had to step away from it. Yeah, know? I was going to ask about that, too. So yeah. Josh from Rebel 8 yep. was behind Hi-Fi Art. Yeah. That was like that, that was a pretty was the, sick website. No, back that's in the, the day. thing. That's yeah. how we met, and I started tattooing him. So that was yeah. for those who don't know. That was like that was like the art crimes of the Bay. It was, was and like it was the graffiti great. Database it was uh, kind of impartial because he's not a graffiti writer. Yeah. Um, but had a really good eye for good style and knew who were the dope people and was just savvy about, like, getting it. He's, like, obsessive-compulsive, so he's just like, I got to get the flicks, you know? I missed that site. It was was dope. But am I I remembering correctly that they kind of caught some heat because somebody used hi-fi art to prosecute writers oh fuck i didn't know that okay i don't know i don't want to throw that out there well that's the thing though once it's out there yeah i mean that's the thing with forums i mean because that's what they do right when uh, when you get uk down right yeah yeah Yeah. yeah, a little bit when you you get wrapped up they're gonna they're gonna come with all the evidence they can get to say hey this is all the shit this is what he writes and this is all the different shit he's because you're always gonna say oh that's the only tag i've ever done that one tag i'm sorry my bad i didn't mean it yeah. And like, and well, like, what about all these pictures right. from it, Instagram, bro? Exactly. Your whole Instagram yeah. is you the tagging on shit, bro. The graph squad. <laughs> yeah. Shows up with the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And those motherfuckers follow graffiti like writers. No, they used they to know do the gossip. Uh, 35 thing. millimeter photos. Man. That was the red check thing. Remember that? There was, a, I think oh, it was a yeah, police yeah. officer yeah. that was had like paint, like in a brush or a roller, and just would have put a red check over your piece no, I had, after I, I, they photographed. I had, it, to, so it I had showed... to do that shit in community service. Fuck yeah. I had to go That's hack sick. people out. They're like, go oh, hack them out. I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> hack them out. He's dope. They're like, go oh, do it. Yeah. Fuck. That's right. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That was the thing. That was the thing. I remember that being a real like, oh shit, we got the attention yeah, of the Vandal yeah, Squad. That, I got to let you know, hey, we're looking. It's for almost you, like buddy. the blue check on Instagram. We're looking for you, giant. We got the we're, red we're graffiti after check. You, man. I never got the check. <laughs> you never got it. But okay. that's the thing. I was always. That's another thing with I think part of my success. I was never the guy to go super fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. I never used those uh, etching fluid shit. mops. Yeah, yeah. I I remember I was tattooing Sace in ear snot the summer of two thousand. One of my first street shop job, and they showed me mops and they showed me photos and and they did those gigantic windows in Soho. Yeah, they were like yeah. fucking ten thousand dollar windows. Yeah, and they could have just done bodega windows and bullshit, but right. they were like, nah, fuck these holes. Yeah, Iraq bitch, yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, dude, that's asking for a well, lot. Just, just, of heat, just man. having the itch was a felony. I yeah, no, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, they would get loose, and they were like, you want one? I was like, I don't want anything to do You're with like, that. I'm good, buddy. And also, I was like, a, I'm a style writer. There's that whole thing between the style writers and the bombers sure. from, like, Style Wars, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, and I'm a style writer, so yeah. if it doesn't make a nice mark, I'm not so interested. It's kind of that way with tattoos, too. I want I want to see the mark. I want to see the precision, right. not into rough, loose right, stuff, right, 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 you know? Right. To Makes each sense. his own, though. Yeah, yeah, off yeah. top. 
Yeah. So you meet Josh through through um, Hi Fi Art. Hi Fi Art. Yeah. And he approaches you about tattoos. Yeah, he knew I was tattooing and, and was just like, this dude does sick fucking graffiti. He's probably a really good tattooer. And I'd rather get a tattoo from this guy yeah. than, than somebody else. That's and yeah, we just hit it off, man. He's a crazy little dude. So you right designed the start. That, the eight logo. Yeah. And all, all yeah. The original. Was it yeah. exclusively you for yeah. the beginning? Yeah. I did all the graphics. All I mean, initially it was just me and him. So I was officially like the first employee, and so he it, took care of everything else. He was on the business <laughs> end; you were on the creative yeah, end. Yeah, in a much. little apartment on Divisadero, yeah, right next to Everlasting. And, and that shit went quite far. In, oh yeah, in, in, no, it's still around. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Um, it's even in a really nice place now. Yeah, it's very like street niche. You know, I don't think he does wholesale at all. Right. So it's like you got to really go right to it and get it, which is a great business model, I think. What, what do you What do you think are some things that work for clothing brands in terms of design, marketing, making it successful? Uh, you just got to put it out there. Hmm. Just put it out there and see if it bites. Yeah, again, you never know what people are going to be into. And these days you can like get a sample made and offer it up and see if you get orders. And then take that and get them digitally printed the same day. Just like a, a Xerox copy yeah. on a T-shirt, you know what I mean? And so it's just so easy that way. So just you know? see what people respond to. Basically. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I do that with digital editions. So I'll just have some stuff printed out digital because I usually do silk screen prints. Yeah. That's like the backbone of my business. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. I'll do these really small editions of digital prints so I can offer up. See, uh, there's an edition of twenty. And I might sell ten, and I just go make ten, and then I'm not sitting yeah, on yeah, ten yeah. No, in that's, that's, you know that's warehousing, right let's say. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. It's that's why it's so different these days. Yeah, is there's that access to have the production really, really fast. Have you ever thrown some shit out there that just didn't work, and you just like tons Whoa. of stuff, Whoa. especially when we were doing things skateboards. Mm -hmm. You just throw shit out there and hope it stuck. Because some of the times it was the dumbest shit that stuck. Yeah, you never really know, right? I did a, a drawing of a fucking. Uh, it was based on a jackalope, the rabbit with the antlers on it, you know, from New Mexico. And I just did a chihuahua dog with antlers, and underneath it just said horn dog. And the guys were like, ah, oh, that's funny. We'll put it on the board, and we'll see how. And it sold, like, fucking crazy, way yeah. more than what the pro models were selling. Right, right. <laughs> and it was the dumbest right. thing, dude. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it was like, we thought, this is not, we might print 100 of these, you right. know, and then you're 5,000 deep in sales, and you're like, no shit, horn dog is doing good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that's a good lesson though not to overthink shit and just just let your creativity And yeah work. that that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And skateboarding was a great kind of thing for that where you could just throw ideas out and see if the 13 year olds are feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of 13 year olds. Mm. What what are your thoughts on today's generations of riders because I, me personally I talk about this a lot. I noticed the cool. shift yeah. where people are definitely more into bombing it seems yeah. like these days which yeah. I'm cool with. Yeah. But a lot less. It's here though too, man. You say, it, say what? It's What's the that? Bay Area. The Bay Area. It, it yeah, goes yeah. through different kind. Of, yeah. That's the thing. Functionally, right now, bombing is the thing to do here. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's exciting. I love seeing all the tags and throw ups. Yeah, they ain't buffing right now either. No. Nah. Interesting. And that's the thing. I mean, we know from the '90s, it's still not on that level. No. I, yeah. I you can't even. You can show kids flicks of, like, it's the mission the same, in the right? 90s, yeah. but, bro, just yeah. to walk the streets and just the layers of tags. To ride a bus. It was crazy. The yeah. buses were so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that the first week I was here, man. Some kids hopped on the mission bus and just went nuts. Like, six kids just tagging everything. And this lady was like, you dirty vandal motherfuckers, those markers smell like shit, you know? And the kids were like, fuck you, lady, and just kept writing yeah. and just got off at the next uh, stop, <laughs> you know? And I was like, Jesus, they just caught, like, 30 tags <laughs> in one stop. That was wild, and I'm just kicking back just, like, watching, like, damn, he's got this, like, one flow going, you know? Yeah. Tripping out. Remember that first week, too? I think it was... I don't know what it was, but there was, like, a... These two leather men, the gay guys, and one was a midget, and they were both super drunk. And I was standing in the front of the bus, standing, you know, holding the rails. And these two guys got on, and the little dude was so drunk, he kept falling over. 
and he literally pulled himself up on my pants and wrapped his arm around my leg to stay from falling over. First week in Frisco, dude. It was just like, what the fuck, bro? This place. Wow. Yeah, that shit was shocking. Yeah, it's crazy because you know? it's shocking, but it's also like regular. Like, oh, yeah, oh so regular. Crazy, weird, I mean, bizarre we, shit on We the used streets. to go, me and Soap and Felon, and the girls would go to the Folsom Street Fair mm-hmm. and we would dance with everybody. We would do fucking, I would do acid and ecstasy <laughs> and yeah, man. Some of the craziest sh- shit we ever got into was those uh, Folsom Street Fair after parties. What, what made you <laughs> leave San Francisco? Was it? Um, on one level, I got priced out, as did Joshi, uh-huh. trying to help Rebel 8 grow. Uh, the tech people were taking over all the warehouse spaces for offices, all the way out to Hunter's Point and whatnot, you know? So it just we just got pushed right out. So he needed to get a bigger warehouse, so we had to move to L.A. Uh. And I was paying three grand for a one small be- one-bedroom apartment in the avenues yeah. off the park. Um yeah, and it was just like, okay, we got to we got to move to LA. So I did LA for a year. Yeah. And then I ended up moving to Colorado. Mm. For I was there for 5 years. Yeah, you you've lived all around the world. You've traveled yeah. all around. Yeah. I mean, I had world. extended stays. I was yeah. in Amsterdam like 10 months of 2008. I lived in New York City. I lived in uh I've been to Paris for some really long stays a few times. Uh London too. I lived a few different times actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome, man. It's I I think it's got to open up your perspective. You know, it it showed me what it is to be an American. Yeah. You don't know that shit until you go somewhere else and immerse yourself in what, another what, culture what, what do you and think just, that is to be American. Um This might be a touchy subject, but racism is different. Oh, yeah. Because we're a mix. Yeah. Like, when I'm in Finland and they're talking shit about the Swedes and the Danes and the Russians, you kind of get it because they're separate countries, they're separate languages, they're distinctively, obviously different cultures, you know? And here it's just like we're we're all kind of mixed up. So it's just this different, I don't know. It's just different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't need, yeah. But, but it... Like, um, I like American women, you know, like the way that American women deal with men and we can speak with men and the, 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 the freedoms that they do have, you know, I think it makes for a, a more exciting partner personally. I know it might mean. be a bias. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's just the thing. Yeah. That's just something about that. When I come back, I'm like, oh yeah, American yeah. girls are tight. You're kind of a player too, man. You, not, you, not really. I, but I've, I've do... seen, I've seen all the names you've hit up over the years. All the different, all the different no, girls. No, that's and... just it though. But that's the, you know, the graffiti writing is really important to me, and maybe the most important, and sometimes the most stressful situations. And it can be nice to reflect on that person that's special in your life. And it's funny, too, because some girls hate that shit. Yeah. They see me put them up, and they're like, dude, don't ever do that again. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not cool. I want nothing to do with that bullshit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) totally. And it's uh, funny, too, because they'll think it's cool, and then they'll start digging through my old flicks and realize I do that with kind of every girl that I've dated over the years, and they're like, motherfucker, stop doing that. I thought this was our special thing. Who's fucking Felicia, dude? (laughs) You hit her up like 15 times. Girl, that was 92. You're like, that's my cousin, Felicia. (laughs) man, yeah, like, relax. Yeah, but and I'm not really a player either. I, I, I always just responded to chemistry. And it's surprising. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, like, <clears throat> I won't have chemistry with a girl that's just at face value, like, super hot, and I should be really into it. And I'm just not feeling it. And sometimes I meet, like, a goofy art girl or something with cross eyes or something, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm in love with you. I don't even know what the fuck is happening. I'm yeah. dizzy around you, you know? Well, so then, I just kind of roll with that. Looking at looking at your art, I mean, women... Are, are, are pretty prominent in a lot of oh, your sure. drawings. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a prominent thing in life in general. Sure. Hugely yeah. impactful. Nothing's more inspiring than a woman. Yeah. Nothing I have ever made can rival the beauty of a woman, you know? I have never, I have, I've learned the most about everything from women. <laughs> Spoken like a true poet. You know? Like a true artist. Yeah, I'm just really... I don't know. 
God, I'm really like ass. honored by the attention of 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 particular women. Yeah, I have a lot know? of appreciation for women and and, and yeah. their insight and and their yeah. you know their feedback, what yeah. they respond to, and, and right. you know some some of the wisdom that they have, their women's right. intuition. I think too, like the self investigative work I've done as a Buddhist really is intrinsically interesting to women. It's just like because they're always asking dudes to do that work. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And oh, it's yeah, just like, yeah. I've been on that trip for a long time. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. sat in silence for a week a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like real that's, shit. That's not easy. And for, that's for fun to people. be able to talk to them. And yeah. I think they like to talk to men that are understanding of those things, too. I, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what, what you, you've done so much, man. You, you've had such a long run at this. You're still painting. You're still drawing. Here you're still there. doing shows. Oh, yeah. You're still traveling. Yep. Is there anything else that you want to accomplish that you haven't yet or 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 anything else that you want to push yourself to 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 do because you've pretty much done it all that's the thing i'm just kind of in that buddhist mode now of going day to day and responding to the moment responding to uh, opportunities creating opportunities but i don't have like a long-term vision yeah you know i joke that i'd love to move out of california i, I honestly i joke that if texas uh, changes their cannabis laws, I'll move in there immediately. Mm. But not where everybody's at. I'd like to live rural. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know. Texas, yeah, whatever. California's cool, but I don't really need to be here, you know? No, it's but changing. at the same yeah. time, like I say, if day-to-day -day everything's great and I'm conscious of the pros and cons and, you know, I'm willing to put in the work to make it happen. Yeah, man. You know, it's it's worth it. Yeah. And it's still pretty easy. Yeah. You know, I would like to teach, though. Uh, you know, I've always thought about having a school. Hmm. So Tattoos, design. Everything. Yeah. Everything that I know. Sp Old school paint. methods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea, All man. by hand. Yeah. And then hire people that can teach the students the, the computer stuff if they need to be. Yeah. But I would be, the focus would be the old school methodologies, well, which uh, yeah. seems like young people are really interested in. Because I was going to say that that is somewhere else you could take it because yeah. there is definitely a need to pass the, the traditions down and pass yeah. the knowledge along and help other sure. people out. if they want it. Because we talked a yeah. lot about the the support that you had from your mentors and yeah. your friends and, and your yeah. parents and and, and and girls and all this stuff. It's yeah. like that's a, that's something that I feel like as you really could reach this level of like damn near perfecting your craft. It's like well, yeah. what, what's next? You that's know, next. Help somebody else. Along yeah. The way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread the knowledge. Keep the shit going. All yeah, that type of stuff. Yeah, it was some quote where it was like if you were really trying to have the most influence. You become a teacher. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's that's that final level. Yeah. Miyagi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know what's up. Yeah, I can man. show you how. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's casual. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think that's something in the future. Well, man, I, f I feel like there's we've been going for a minute. There's there's yeah. so much more we could talk about. Maybe another oh, sure. episode next time. Yeah, we're whatever, back in man. Town. Yeah, we'll dude. Get some other stuff we did we didn't cover today, but uh, yeah, it's really a pleasure getting to meet you, getting yeah. to, to go to your show last night and yeah, having you that was here, fun. bro. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Let's stay in touch and uh, oh, we will. keep me posted. Whatever else you got going yeah, on. Yeah, I will. I All will. Right. Thank right. you. All right, y'all. Mike. Giant, History of the Bay, San Francisco, Bay Area, California, worldwide. Can't stop, won't stop. We out of here. Word. Peace. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay.